All right. Looking into the concept of worship. The deeds in the aforementioned verse are the deeds of righteousness. They are only a part of worship. The prophet foretold, the prophet told us about faith, which is the basis of worship, worship, that it is made up of 60 and some branches, the highest of which is the belief in the oneness of Allah, i.e. there is no God but Allah. And the lowest in the scale of worship is removing obstacles and dirt from people's way. Hmm. So I guess they go around with little uh, wisp brooms, huh? Little dust busters. No, I don't think that's it. You know, my apologies to uh, most rational, moderate Muslims, but I just can't help it, like, harken back to, like, you know, the Taliban and, you know, getting your ass kicked because your beard isn't long enough. You know, where they're just regulating every fucking thing now. That's the thing I have a problem with, and that's why I'm against theocracy and all religions demand it. I don't care about religion. Theocracy, that's something worth fighting against. The prophet, PBUH, said, whoever finds himself at the nightfall tired of his work, God will forgive him, forgive his sins. Seeking knowledge is one of the highest forms of worship. Well, I'm kind of doing a little worshiping right now. The prophet, PBUH, said uh, seeking knowledge is a religious duty on on every Muslim. And another saying, he said, seeking knowledge for one hour is better than praying 70 years. That, that would be a good needlepoint on the wall. Uh, Yeah, that's a good one. No citation, though. But I, I agree with that one. Yeah, praying doesn't really do a whole lot of anything except maybe make you feel better. If that's what makes you feel better. <sighs> Social courtesy and cooperation are a part of worship when done for the sake of Allah, as the prophet PBUH told us. You know, that's just such a lot of crap, you know? I was in a city today. You know, I had a, a doctor's appointment. By the way, seems like for 63 years old, I'm doing just fine. Need to lose some weight, of course, but not bad, you know. And but like I said, in through the day, and I unconsciously was doing it. I held the door open for people for no reason, just because it felt like the right thing to do. And and why not? Other people sometimes hold the door open for me, and even if others don't, the fact that anyone does it, I'll pay that forward, you know. But yeah, all I never really figured into that. I just did it because it made me feel good. Because, yeah, sometimes not being an asshole and even making someone's day, random acts of kindness, the gift is a gift itself, you know, to the giver. But that's, you know, like I said, you know, you don't make a ritual out of it. That's just your nature, you know. If given a choice, you'd rather not be a dick. Anyway, speaking for myself, anyway. Uh, 
Receiving your friend with a smile is a type of charity. Well, boy, I'm really generous, Tim. I do that all the time. And putting some water in your neighbor's bucket is a charity. Yeah, we're in agreement. It is worth noting that even performing one's duty is considered an act of worship. No shit. <laughs> I've been working all my life, didn't even realize it. Thought I was just, you know, <laughs> earning my bread. The prophet, da da da, told us that whatever, whatever one spins for his family is a type of charity. Yeah, that's true. You could be a deadbeat, right? And not do anything for them. So, yeah. Become all virtuous. We're doing the bare minimum. But, yeah, no, it's great. Great. You're worshiping. That's great. I didn't realize I was doing so many kinds of worship myself. How about that? <sighs> Kindness to the members of one's family is an act of worship. As is putting a piece of food lovingly in the mouth of one's spouse. As the prophet PBUH informed us. Not only this, but even the acts that we enjoy when performed according to divine instruction are considered acts of worship. Some rules may apply, apparently. Thus, Islam does not consider the sexual urge as inherently dirty or sinful. It is dirty and sinful only when it is satisfied outside the marital union of man and wife. The prophet, PBUH, told his companions that they would be rewarded even for having sexual intercourse with their wives. Sweet. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, the companions were astonished and asked, how are we going to be rewarded for doing something we enjoy very much? The prophet PBUH asked them, Suppose you satisfy your desires illegally. Don't you think that you would be punished for that? <laughs> they replied, Yes. So he said, by satisfying it legally with your wives, you are rewarded for it. Hey, that's not all bad, huh? I guess. Mm -hmm. It is clear that the concept of worship in Islam is comprehensive. You don't say that again. Damn, these hornets are all over there. Get going after my chilada. <sighs> Bastards. Yeah, the hornets are real bad. They've been bad. <sighs> Includes all positive activities of the individual. Yeah. Thought I was rereading something, but no, they just repeated themselves. All right. This, of course, is an agreement with all the all inclusive nature of Islam as a way of life. It regulates the human life on all levels. The individual, the social, the economic, the political, and the spiritual. All activities are considered by Allah as acts of worship. 
if done in conformance to his guidance. This should lead us to seek all his pleasure in our activities and always try to do them in the best possible manner. Whether we are being watched or we are alone, there is always the permanent supervisor who knows, hears, and sees everything. And that is all. Discussing the non-ritual worship in Islam first does not mean under-evaluating the importance of the ritual ones. Actually, ritual worship, if performed in true spirit, elevate the individual morally and spiritually and enable one to perform one's activities in all walks of life according to the guidance of God. Among ritual worships, Salah, prayer, occupies a key position for two reasons. Firstly, it is the distinctive mark of a believer. Secondly, it prevents an individual from all sorts of abominations and vices by providing him chances of direct communication with the Creator five times a day. What a golden opportunity can't begin to tell you how unappealing that sounds to me. I mean, if I were really talking to God, hell yeah. All the time, anytime. Honestly, he'd probably get sick of talking to me. <laughs> but that ain't happening, is it? I don't know, is it? <sighs> we're in he renews his covenant with God and seeks his guidance again and again. And I'm going to cut it off there. And we'll finish up in the next video. That was a lot to digest anyway. I hope you've thought about it some and um, have some comments to make maybe. Who knows? Um, like I said, almost done. And then I'll break out my Dungeons and Dragons dice again to decide a which one to read next? Anyway, um, unless somebody in the comments, knowing what I have from past video, requests one of the remaining ones, then I'll do that instead of roll dice. But anyway, um, we'll finish up in the next video.